I think I knew pretty early on that there weren't many people that looked like me in the sport. I do vividly remember being five years old and being on the playground after swim practice. I was playing with a little white boy and I remember him telling me that he hated me because I was black. I don't actually think I said anything to my parents. I don't know why I held on to it in a means of not telling them right away. I think it's kind of the same with some of the things I deal with today. It's like, sometimes I try to handle it on my own because I know that probably as a parent, it's really hard to hear some of what I deal with. So I think that started from a young age of not necessarily vocalizing some of the things that I've dealt with. And especially having that memory, um, it's easy to kind of realize like you're different than everybody else. In lane three, Olympic record, Manuel. You are the first African-American woman to medal in an individual event in swimming. This gold means so much for so many reasons. New American record of a 100 Incredible worlds for Simone Manuel. She's fighting through depression. Simone Manuel, she sits in fourth right now, 54-1. That's not a good time. She talked about overtrained syndrome. Can she get a lane in the final? Simone Manuel, I think, is going to be just on the outside looking in. And this is her last shot to make the team. And she did it! She's it's Manuel! Simone Manuel makes Team USA! I don't think there was too much expectation to continue to win. I think there was a lot of comments to an extent that what I accomplished was a fluke. And I know that heading into the following world championships, I still was considered the underdog after being the reigning Olympic champion. I put a lot of pressure on myself internally because I wanted to perform well. I feel like most of that pressure probably comes from me to feel like I need to be that example. I think heavily because there aren't many of us. And so I feel like if I'm healthy and I can continue to do this, like I wanna win for myself, but also for that kid to feel like they can be at the top of the podium as well. I do feel like every time I step up on the blocks that it gives me an opportunity and a platform to inspire that generation to push towards the goals that they want. My training was going pretty well until the pandemic hit. Pools got shut down fairly quickly, just like everything else. What do we do? What's the solution? Are the Olympics happening? When is it gonna happen? I think I maybe had two or three days off before we found that backyard pool and I just continued to train. I was then being asked to speak on these panels. How can we support our black community? How can we diversify the sport of swimming? There's been all this talk about the first black this and the first black that, and Simone told me it started to weigh on her. She felt like she was swimming with the whole weight of the black community on her shoulders. She's expected to be the one to answer those questions, whereas other swimmers are not. And if we're talking about inclusivity, if we're talking about equality, it should matter to everyone. How are you training? What are you doing? You know, they're asked questions about their profession and she's asked questions about what's going on in the world. Being an athlete who was trying to focus on the Olympics, it was my job to work and to continue to train, but also then be asked to continue to put my emotions on the line for other people to like, in some way be entertained by it. It was just a really tough time for me and then because I was training so hard and never took a break, I think my body just ended up crashing. I started to feel like I wasn't myself. I wasn't performing well in practice. Things were a little harder than they used to be. And then it kept getting worse and worse and worse. So then we hit January of 2021, 
I have a inner squad swim meet at Stanford and I'm not pleased with my performances. You know, I kind of go to my coach, I'm like, mm, I don't feel good about these performances. And he's like, oh, you're doing fine. Like, you'll feel better soon. So I kind of just brush it off and continue to move on. There are times when she has to compete and she has to take care of her body. She has to take care of her mind. When she says she's tired or she's not feeling well, I don't think she gets the attention or validation that this could actually be something more serious. So a lot of times she really still is viewed as you're the strong person, you're gonna be fine. I like to think of myself as someone that has a high swimming IQ. So I'm very aware of what's going on with my body. I just knew that things were off. My stroke wasn't feeling the same. My rhythm was off. And I remember having conversations with my coach and asking him like, well, how do you think I'm training? Oh, you're, you're training really well. Like this is the best training I've ever seen you have. And I'm like, but my times are slower. I wish I would have just told him like, no, I'm not gonna come in. We get to March and I go to a swim meet in San Antonio and I can't even compete all my events. My body couldn't handle it. I was just sore. I couldn't get my heart rate down. I wasn't sleeping and ended up going to the doctor and the doctor tells me that I'm overtrained. So honestly, at that point, I knew that all the goals that I had for myself in Tokyo weren't gonna be reached. It really just was about damage control. I continued to train for a little while per, you know, my coach's instructions and my progress continued to decline. My doctor decided that I needed to take a three week break or I wasn't even gonna make it to Olympic trials. The first sign was increased heart rate, insomnia, depression, anxiety. I knew I wasn't at my best. And that's hard because I, I love this sport. I think my mind was emotionally drained from the entire experience of being overtrained. And then I went back to Stanford and continued to manage my training as best as I could. And that leads us to Olympic trials in Omaha. <laughs> I think I was hopeful to possibly just like, I don't know, pull something out of my butt, but <laughs> that didn't happen. Ended up placing ninth in the 100 free. Simone Manuel will not make it to the final. Which was really difficult because that's the event I won gold in. So to not even make the final was really hard. When she didn't qualify for the 100 free at Olympic trials, I was there, <laughs> I was there. Even Simone trying to decide when to share with the public what was going on, it was hard. And I don't think it should have been. She felt that people wouldn't believe her. And she was absolutely right. That was a tough blow for her. It's not just tired, tired. Your soul is tired. And she just cried. People didn't believe that I actually was overtrained. People said that I was distracted by all my other sponsor obligations, and that's why I didn't perform well. That I had become lazy and that my success went to my head. It's really hard to be vulnerable in that space because it's so easy for people to say they don't believe me. I don't get the empathy or understanding that I deserve. You know, we've talked to Simone multiple times and told her, you know, this is your life. You have done it. If you never want to touch a pool again, we're okay with that. Kind of had to explain myself to people, explain what happened, what I had been going through and then try to reset for the 50 free. 
I think in my mind, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be left off of this team. Simone Manuel going to Tokyo, <laughs> returning on Team USA. Ended up winning that and making the team, but Tokyo was not fun at all. I don't think that I would have declined my spot to go to the Olympics, but I didn't expect it to be that hard or I just wasn't prepared for what that would be like to go and watch people in the hunter free to not be on relays that I had been on for years. It's really hard to step up on the starting blocks or the starting line and know that you're not prepared at all. It's just kind of like, why am I even here? I hate admitting that because I'm someone that if I have a lane, I'm like, I have the possibility of winning this because I'm so competitive, but also it's because I'm prepared. My, you know, my, my ultimate concern is, is Simone and how is she doing and is she getting the care that she needs? She was like, if I had been at least healthy, I would have done much better. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a fighter and to know that I, I had nothing left uh, was, it hurt me a lot. She talked about very openly being a black female athlete in America, especially in this sport, a difficult and lonely place. I don't think enough competitive fire in me could have allowed me to make the final in the 50 free. I distinctly remember going back to the team area, taking off my swimsuit, and just crying. If I was healthy, I was going in winning six medals. I only was going home with one. So I just was like really hurt by the whole experience. Sorry, didn't expect to. <laughs> when she got home, it was her 25th birthday and she was not happy, and I understand that. So what we did was we just took down all the Olympic stuff. Anything that had anything to do with Tokyo, we put it away because I didn't want her to come here and have that reminder of the pain that she'd gone through because it just was not always easy. Obviously, what she's gone through, as with anyone, when you've gone through some things, it, it kind of changes you a little bit. What I do still see is the strong will Simone, the competitive Simone, the Simone that still has fire. I think I would like to continue swimming on a clean slate. What I experienced with the Olympics and being overtrained was unfortunate, but definitely was a learning experience for me in multiple ways, just how I want to protect my body physically, but also mentally. Winning isn't everything, but it's fun. That's how I like to think of it. <laughs> yeah. Reconnecting with the ones you love is extremely important, and I think I've sacrificed a lot, but in order to continue to be happy in the sport, I just want to spend more time with my family, you know, you listen to my wife talk about her trials and tribulations that she goes through, and that's one of my favorite scriptures, <laughs> count it all joy, but it's seeing her go through it, yeah, I've gone through it, but he's answered my prayers, and he's, he's blessed her and given her a crown, and she's my crown. I have won back-to-back -back gold medals from the Olympics to World Championships, which I don't know, maybe like two or three women have ever done that in the world. I'm the first American woman to ever sweep the 100 and the 50 meter freestyle to World Championships. I have maybe eight, 15, 18 World Championship medals. I'm the first woman to win seven World Championship medals. And I can't even like think of all of what I've done, but I've done quite a bit of things for in a black woman, an American woman, and just a swimmer in general. I've, I've reached a lot of first or 
very few that uh, have accomplished something as great as like sweeping a sprint, world championships and things like that. Going into the next chapter of swimming would be trying to block out all the noise. I just want to swim with no pressure or expectations from anybody, even myself. Um, which I don't know what that looks like, but <laughs> I think that's what's next for me and that's definitely gonna be the focus. It's just really falling back in love with the sport and just being happy doing it. And then getting back to competing on the highest level and hopefully winning some more medals.